entrance antiphon. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in distress. Deliver me from the hands of my enemies and those who pursue me. O Lord, let me never be put to shame, for I call on you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins as we now ask God for his forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who in this season give your church the grace to imitate devoutly the Blessed Virgin Mary in contemplating the passion of Christ. Grant, we pray, through her intercession that we may cling more firmly each day to your only begotten Son, who came at last to the fullness of his grace, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped. Then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble. They will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them for to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and he heard my voice. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. I love you, O Lord, my strength. O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. My God, my rock of refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Praise be the Lord, I exclaim, and I am safe from my enemies. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. The breakers of death surged round about me. The destroying floods overwhelmed me. The cords of the netherworld enmeshed me. The snares of death overtook me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God. From his temple, he heard my voice, and my cry to him reached his
his ears. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Jews picked up rocks to stone Jesus. Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good works from my Father. For which of these are you trying to stone me? The Jews answered him, We are not stoning you for good work, but for blasphemy. You, a man, are making yourself God. Jesus answered them, It is not written in your law, I said, you are gods. If it calls them gods to whom the word of God came, and scripture cannot be set aside, can you, stay, can you say that the one whom the Father has consecrated and sent into the world blasphemes because I said, I am the Son of God? If I do not perform my Father's works, do not believe me. But if I perform them, even if you do not believe me, believe the works, so that you may realize and understand that the Father is in me, and I am in the Father. Then they tried again to arrest him, but he escaped from their power. He went back across the Jordan to the place where John first baptized, and there he remained. Many came to him and said, John performed no sign, but everything John said about this man was true, and many there began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. As we read the Gospel each day, and as we go throughout this Gospel of John, we see the story begin to escalate. Those beginning to become very irritated by what Jesus is saying and doing. Specifically, as we see today, they're ready to stone him. They're ready to attack him because of his claim that he is the Son of God. But yet, Jesus never relents. He never abandons his identity of who he is. Because that's the will of the Father. For him to give glory to his Father and to bring about his father's kingdom and work. But we see in this moment where it becomes very intense, the actions of Jesus are very important. Although it's subtle, it's very clear. What does Jesus do in this moment when all are against him and things are very tense and his life is at risk? He goes back to where it all began. The gospel tells us that he goes to the Jordan and it's there where he first began his ministry, that that proclamation was made from the heavens that this is my beloved son. On that day, whenever Jesus was baptized and made those waters holy, in this moment, Jesus goes back to where it all began. If you think about our life as Christians, we constantly do the same thing, or at least the church invites us to do that to always come back where it began for us, which is in this church or the church where you were baptized. But it doesn't matter whether you go to that specific church or this church, coming back to the church allows us to recommit and to renew every time we enter these walls, these sacred walls, our relationship with the Lord. And we need that. I think as we reflect on this past year, one of the reasons why it's been so difficult is because we could not do that. We couldn't come back to where it all began for us. And even over the past few weeks, I've heard people say and speak about the struggle that they've experienced over this past year and just how they've felt even recently how something's just not right in their life. 
And that's because they can't do what they're meant to do as Christians. And that is come to the sacred walls of the church where they can celebrate the sacraments with their brothers and sisters. And so we should have great joy in our hearts as we come into this church every day, but specifically as we anticipate next week, the joy that comes that we can actually be here to celebrate what is so important for us as Catholic Christians. And to think back how sad it was a year ago when everything was closing, we praise God today that we endured this past year, that he's given us strength to make it through those difficulties, and that we can anticipate with great joy what we'll celebrate together next week as a family in faith. Let us also pray for those who still are not with us, but also maybe perhaps we can encourage those who are on the verge of deciding whether they should come back or not. For those who are healthy and can come back, let us pray for them that they'll be ready and have the courage to make that move so that together next week we can celebrate what our God has done for us, that he sent us the Savior, a Savior who was so faithful to the Father's will, who never gave up, but was committed and fulfilled God's will through his life, his death, and most importantly, his resurrection. With the same trust in God, let us now bring to him our prayers and petitions. For all seminarians and prospective religious, may God bless their efforts of study and discernment, especially the seminarians studying for our diocese. Let us pray to the Lord. For leaders of nations, may the Holy Spirit inspire them in the promotion of peace and the resolution of conflict. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who suffer hardship for the sake of the kingdom, may the Holy Spirit grant them the grace of fortitude. Let us pray to the Lord. For those in this community of worship preparing to receive the Easter sacraments, may the love of Christ embrace them ever more deeply during this time of preparation. Let us pray to the Lord. And let us pray also for the beloved dead especially for Fred Mowry. May Christ welcome them to the wedding feast of the Lamb. And let us pray also for Mr. Kramer, whose funeral will be celebrated here tomorrow, that God will welcome them into eternal glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Yeah. Father of mercy and love, we praise you along with your servants. May we humbly ask you to hear the prayers and petitions we bring before you this day through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, 
For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, O merciful God, that we may be worthy to serve ever fittingly at your altars and there to be saved by constant participation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and a chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Larry, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word. Communion Antiphon. Jesus bore our sins in his own body on the cross, so that dead to sin we might live for righteousness. By his wounds we have been healed.
Let us pray. May the unfailing protection of the sacrifice we have received never leave us, O Lord, and may it always drive far away from us all that, the, all that would do us harm. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.